Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba' Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is the creator of the heavens and earth The only one worthy worship And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is the last prophet and Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala Huwa alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arfi sittati ayam thumma stawa ala arsh Ya'lamu ma yaliju fil ardi wa ma yakhruju minha wa ma yanzilu mina samai wa ma ya'raju fiha وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah, it is He who created the heavens and earth in six days and then established Himself above the throne. He knows what penetrates into the earth and what descends from the heaven and what ascends therein. And He is with you wherever you are. And a lot of what you do is all seen. And all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seen of what you do. All the lordship, all the knowledge of the unseen is with Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. And it is not with the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, nor the angels, alayhim salatu wa salam. And that includes the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as with the other NBA, was given a certain degree of knowledge. And who was the one who gave them this knowledge? It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as believers, we have to know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the NBA, alayhi ma'afthal salatu wa sallam, did not share in divinity with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. That is an un-Islamic belief. So therefore, we don't supplicate to the NBA. Alayhim afthal salatu wassalam. We do not give them any of our worship. All of our worship is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who created them and charged them with being messengers. Alayhim afthal salatu wassalam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam will be the first to enter paradise from amongst the nations and he will intercede on behalf of his his ummah his nation and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has a excellent and high status with his lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why he is granted intercession, alayhi salatu wassalam. And he's granted intercession with Allah by Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with his anbiya, alayhi maftal salatu wassalam. And it's imperative for us to know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam died, alayhi salatu wassalam, as with all the other prophets and messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wassalam, except Jesus, alayhi salatu wassalam, who will die. Jesus, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, ascended, was taken back to, to paradise, and he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, will come back as is one of the signs of the day of ju judgment, and he will die, alayhi salam. However, the other NBA have died and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically about his death in the Quran in Surah al Zumr verse 30 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says addressing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam qala subhana innaka mayyitun wa innuhum mayyitun thumma innakum yawm al qiyamah inda rabbikum in the Rabbikum Taqtasimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Al-Kareem, 
verily you, meaning the Prophet wasallam, will die and verily they will die. Then on the day of resurrection, you will be disputing before your Lord. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear for us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. And this is a well-known thing. The Ummah has ittifaq on this except for those people who have fallen into bid'ah, fallen into religious innovation, who seem to reject the nusus because Allah has informed us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would die. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Let's look at a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which lets us know this is the hadith which tells us and informs us about the importance of using the miswak. And we'll look at why this is important for what we're talking about. To show us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalit, Dakhla Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhuma ala nabi, ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ana musnidatuhu ila sadri. وَمَا عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ سِوَاقُ رُتْبٍ يَسْتَنَّ بِهِ فَأَبَدَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بَصَرُهُ فَأَخَذْتُ السِّوَاقَ فَقَدَمْتُهُ وَطَيَّبْتُهُ ثُمَّ دَفَعْتُهُ إِلَى نَبِيِّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَأَسْتَنَّ بِهِ فَمَا رَأَيْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَسْتَنَّ إِسْتِنَانًا أَحْسَنَ مِنْ فما عدا أن فرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رفع يده أو إصبعه ثم قال في رفيق الأعلى ثلاثا ثم قضي عليه وكانت تقو مات بين حاكنتي وذاكنتي وفي لف فرأيته ينظر إليه وعرفت أنه يحب السواك فقلت آخذه لك فأشار برأسه النعم هذا لفظ بخاري ولي مسلم نحوه. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, it shows us that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم died, and it illustrates one of the last things that he did صلى الله عليه وسلم. عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها said, she said that عبد الرحمن ابن uh, Abi Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma came entered her home at where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was on his deathbed alayhi salatu wa and he was lying on the chest resting on the chest of Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha and Abdurrahman he had a siwak he had a miswak, which we used to clean our teeth. And it was wet, and he was using it to brush his teeth. And the Prophet ﷺ made a signal with his eyes that he uh, wanted the miswak, you know, showing that he approved and that he desired the miswak. So Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she uh, grabbed the miswak and offered it uh, offered it to the Prophet وسلم, and she made it, she put atar, put something that to make it uh, smell good and she gave it to the Prophet وسلم, and he used it to clean his teeth and she said I haven't, I never saw the Prophet وسلم, brush his teeth better than he brushed his teeth at that time you know, he, he did it superbly. He was very thorough. And then when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah Alaihi Salatu Wasallam finished, he raised his hand or his, his finger. And then he said, Fi rafiq al-a'la thalathin. He said, in the uh, highest level of paradise, he, he mentioned this three times. Then he died, alayhi salatu wasalam. There it is. You'll find that in Bukhari and Muslim. And then she used to say, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that he died between, she used to mention, this is the narrator narrating, that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam died 
while resting between her her chest and her upper throat that he was laying here. And then in another narration that the Prophet وسلم, was looking at the miswak and she knew that he loved the miswak. And then she said, should I get, should I give it to you? Or should I should I get it uh, get it for you? And then he motioned with his head, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that yes, he wanted that in the affirmative. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the importance for us is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on his deathbed, that he loved the miswak. It shows the high status of the miswak, of using the miswak to brush your teeth. And that this was so beloved to the Prophet ﷺ, it was one of the last things that he did, alayhi salatu wasalam. And that the Prophet ﷺ died, as was narrated by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and the, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they buried the Prophet ﷺ, and that's why people visit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam at his grave, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam died. There should be the Umm of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam at Ittifaq, they agree upon that. And in the other in another narration, the narration where Umar bin al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he heard the news that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had died, alayhi salatu wasalam, Umar became very angry and he wanted to have the head, slice the head of anyone who mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ had died. And Abu Bakr, you know, this is the, the love that Umar and the Sahaba that they had for the Prophet ﷺ. He wasn't well, willing to accept that emotion had had overtaken him. This is the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Just think how much we love our friends and our families and so forth and when they die how emotion can sometimes take us uh, overwhelm us but this was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can't even imagine and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was not ready he was ready to he said anybody who says that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is dead you know i'm going to have their head basically this is what he said to paraphrase it radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that whoever worships Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Muhammad qad mat that Muhammad has died alayhi salatu wa salam and whoever worships Allah then Allah is, is al hay la yamut wa kama qala Abi Bakr Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he said and whoever worships Allah Whoever worships Muhammad, then Muhammad has died. Whoever worships Allah, then Allah is uh, ever living. And he, he gives life and death. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. So that's other evidence that the Prophet ﷺ died. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ were there. They witnessed it. They buried him. They prepared him for, for death. And they... <clears throat> over the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> and this lets us know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was not divine, meaning that we do not worship him. He didn't share in lordship. Neither do any of the Prophets alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. And that Allah ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. He's al hayy al qayyum and he is the one, a semi of dua, he's the one who hears our prayers, hears our supplications, and that we should supplicate to Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ in his life, he said, So if you seek, uh, if you seek assistance, then seek it from Allah. He didn't say, seek it from me, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, seek it from Allah. And this shows us that all of our ibadah, all of our worship goes to Allah, not the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, as the Anbiya, their bodies, they're in their, their graves in the places they, they died. And the earth will not uh, consume their bodies. 
but their souls, their souls are with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The soul of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in Jannah with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And even though we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when we say Salatu wa Salam on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he returns the greeting as is mentioned in the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that does not mean we direct worship these are issues of the the unseen and this is something we believe in as it is came in an authentic hadith however the life of Arbazak the life of after this life you know the life of the grave that people will be punished or have um, comfort in the grave this life is a life of, un, on the, of the unseen, which is affirmed, uh, confirmed for us in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and we believe in that. That's a part of our iman, is to believe in the qabr, the, the adab al qabr, that there's a punishment of the grave for those people who are wicked sinners or those people who disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that the believers will be the believers in accordance with their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have comfort in their graves. And we believe that the shuhada was siddiqeen, that the martyrs, they are, as is mentioned in authentic hadith and mentioned in the Quran, that they are in the life of barzakhiyah with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, we have no knowledge about how that life is compared to our life here. We just have the, 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 the few texts that inform us of this from Allah Ta'ala and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But as far as the details, we don't know. And as far as a hukum on how we should interact, there is no interaction. We don't supplicate to the martyrs. Even though Allah formed, informed us that they are living there in the souls of little green birds. Their souls are in the in little green birds in paradise. We believe that. But there is no hukum related to that, meaning that we don't supplicate to them. We don't pray to them. We don't make uh, ask them to we don't beseech them and ask them for anything. There's no evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah for this. All the evidence shows us that all ibadah, all worship goes to Allah. And that when we supplicate, uh, this is a form of ibadah. No matter what someone says, if someone tells you that supplication, well, we supplicate to get intercession. We supplicate for this reason. We supplicate to this reason. All of that is batal. And I will tell you why. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a dua who are ibadah. He said supplication is worship. So that informs us that what? That supplicating, our supplication is only to Allah because all worship must be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a part of Tawheed. That's a part of Islamic monotheism. And that Allah is the one who can answer those dua. And when that informs us, that lets us know that seeking intercession from the dead or even those who are living in barzakhiyah which we don't know how that life is that they cannot answer us and they uh, on top of that 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 is a form of ibadah as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Hadith Tirmidhi in Tirmidhi he said Salawatu Rabbi wa Sallam Alaihi Ad-Dua Huwa Ibadah he said Ad-Dua Huwa Ibadah that supplication is worship so if you supplicate to anyone whether they're living or dead, if you're supplicating to them that this is a type of worship, you can ask someone for something that's living. But as far as the, the life in al barzakh we don't know how that life is, and we have nothing from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to show us that we should seek intercession from someone else. In fact, it contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that all dua, all worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't have anything from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi that's sahih, that is sound and authentic, that 
illustrates for us that we should supplicate to the Prophet وسلم, that we should ask him and beseech him for something or that we should beseech our wali, our awliya, our saints or that we should beseech our imams or our family members or whoever is deceased or whoever has been martyred or whoever is a, a righteous person we have no evidence for this not from the Quran, not from the Sunnah of the Prophet nor do we have it from the practice of the Sahaba. They didn't make supplication to the Prophet They didn't worship the Prophet They didn't ask him. They didn't seek his intercession when he died Nor did the Tabi'een, nor did the Itba'a Tabi'een. So if the first three generations didn't do it and the Prophet said خَيْرٌ nas qarni Prophet ﷺ let us know that in that hadith that the best of generations is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnata wa khulafa rajideen. He said, It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. None of them did this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, after explaining to us that the Jews would break into 71 sects and the Christians in 72 sects and his ummah would break into 71 sects, all of them, uh, 70 sects, all of them in the fire except for one. And they said, The Prophet ﷺ said that when he was asked about those who are successful, those who will be saved from the hellfire, amongst those uh, communities because all those other communities that had went astray before us and those from the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, who would go astray that because of their innovation that they would be in the hellfire and the scholars differ whether that means uh, that these are from the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, who have bid'a mukafir who are outside the fold of Islam because they and some, some say no that they are in the fold of Islam that they have committed this major sin of, of, of bid'ah, of innovating in religious practices, so they will spend some time in the fire. And all and the knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, what we know is that innovation leads us astray. And that what? And that we are ordered to follow the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and his sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, which is apparent from that hadith and in the many ahadith, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kulli su wa makroom and bless us with ilm nafi wa ruskan tayyib wa amal muttaqabilin and bless us to direct our worship in the, uh, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and that the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam return to goodness and protect us from kulli su wa makroom and we need guidance from Allah and we ask that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Blesses the Muslims everywhere the guidance and has mercy upon them and blesses with them with Jannah to Firdaus and protects them from all the harms and difficulties and trials that they're facing. And may Allah protect us from the evil of the Rafida and those people who attack Ahlul Sunnah and attack the Muslims everywhere.